again my little yarnivores and spiderettes fiber spider back again with another tutorial just for you and today i am very happy to show you something that i came up with the pineapple beret yes it's kind of slouchy it's kind of lacy it's a lot of fun perfect for this time of year if you want to wear a hat but not something designed for the winter months and you could make it up in a cotton yarn, a cotton blend. Um, this is actually acrylic, but I think it worked out just fine. And I wanted to give a very, very, very special thank you to Maya, who was the model for the intro pictures, the thumbnail for this video. Thank you, Maya. I appreciate it very, very much. And so this is the first attempt that I made of this hat. And as you can see, it's very, very lacy. And I, I wanted Maya to do the pictures for the intro because she has hair. Obviously, I don't. And if you have hair, this hat works out a lot better. Um, and so, like I said, this is the first attempt that I made with this hat. And then I'm thinking to myself, self, can I do something different? And I did. And then I came up with this version. Now this version has five, five sides, five pineapple motifs, five of these. And then I thought to myself, well, can I do six? Sure enough, you can. And it worked out just beautifully. Now the image in the thumbnails that is a five-sided one. So this one I literally just made today, and I wanted to show you what it looks like. Let me straighten it out there. And there you go. Now, obviously, if you have hair, it makes a difference. I, however, do not. <laughs> but it makes a cute beret. And it's, in my opinion, it's very boho and it's very fun and very youthful. I like it. I think it's a lot of fun. Now, this I made with Pound of Love. Uh, this is the colorway of Elephant Gray. And this is the colorway of Pumpkin Spice. And today we're going to be using Oxford Gray. And there's really not much of a difference between this hat and this hat, just the number of base chains that you make, because unlike most hats, where you start at, at the crown here, you start along the brim. The, the edging here is where you start for this particular hat. And I love how it came out, because it has a really neat star lacy bit at the top on the crown. I really like it very, very much. And necessity is the mother of invention, right? Um, now to go into further detail, um, this hat, this hat has a base chain of 60 chains. Now I needed something that was uh, divisible by 12 for this stitch to work out. So this hat has a base chain of 60 chains, and I used a size J crochet hook, which is six millimeters. Okay. Then for the next one up, I have 72 chains for my base chain for this hat, and I used a smaller hook to compensate. Otherwise, it would be really way too big for the brim. And so I used an H hook, which is five millimeters. So the difference of just one millimeter did make a difference. Now, you could play around with the hook size. You could play around with the number of chains. Now, what I was saying before about the, the base chains. So 60 chains will give you five motifs. Okay. 72 chains will give you six motifs. Okay. So that being said, you can fiddle and finagle around a little bit um, if you wanted to make this in a thinner yarn. This is Pound of Love, so it is a weight of four. It's a thin-ish weight of four. It's more of like a bulky three, if you will. It's 
it's not an exact science, you know. Um, it is a thinner weight of four. However, it is essentially a worsted weight yarn. Um, also, of course, it depends on your gauge, your stitching tension. And I know I'm going into a lot of detail before actually shooting the tutorial, but I wanted to emphasize the fact that, yes, you can change the pattern a little bit and manipulate the hook size a little bit so that this pattern can work for you as far as what you want it to be. As far as colors, I think that a uh, an ombre, I think it would look awesome. I decided to go with a solid color yarn because you do so much work with this beautiful lace and I think that it would be too much of a distraction if you had a busy colorway. Personal opinion, personal preference, that's just me. But that being said, let's get started. Okay. <laughs> All right, my dears. So for today's tutorial, I'm going to basically go over how to do the six pointed or six sided or six motifed version of the hat. Although you can do the five sided really with no you know, major difference or problem whatsoever. So again, to do the six sided version of this hat, I'm gonna be using a size H five millimeter hook and a total of 72 chains. Now, of course, if you want to do the five-sided version like this, I mean, it really depends on how many sides, how many points you want. You know, like if you want to have, you know, two in the front, one in the back, well, then you would go with this version. If you want to have two in the front and two in the back with that level of symmetry, you can do that too. Now, again, for this version, it would be a total of 60 chains, and you would use a size J six millimeter hook, but, you know, it really, dealer's choice, it's totally up to you. For me, though, I want to do another one of these in the Oxford Gray. So I already chained up my 72 chains, and we are going to get into round one ASAP. So basically right now it's a matter of do you want 60 chains or 72 chains or if you want to go even smaller, technically speaking you can. It's just a number that is divisible by 12. Um, keep in mind that if you go smaller than 60, you know, by 12 chains, you're going to end up with four points. Smaller than that, three points. And eventually, you know, it's like, okay, so we've got a lace hat for a baby doll. Um, so, you know, right now is the, the you know, the, the, the time to figure out how many chains do you want for your base chain, and we will get into connecting them for round one. Alrighty, so... Round one really, really, really is quite simple in the grand scheme of things. So after doing all of your chains, now this this does have a tendency to freak some people out, but it's really not that bad. All you need to do is when you're connecting this to be sure not to twist your chain. It's not a very, very long chain, so it's not terribly difficult, but just do not twist your chain. So we have my chain there and I haven't twisted it yet. And then still make sure that it is not twisted. Okay, so that is the end of the chain. So we're going to connect our chain with a slip stitch. So I'm going to not twist it, but turn it like so. And then I like to go underneath both loops of that first chain because frankly, I think it creates a neater edge and it's worth the extra effort in this particular case. And so going underneath both loops, do a slip stitch connecting both ends. Then to continue on for the rest of this round, again, this is personal preference. I like to chain up two, not to count as a stitch, but to give us some, you know, some height. Um, and then into this first stitch where we did the join, that is where we're going to do our first double crochet stitch. 
like so. And then when we get to full circle, we're going to slip stitch into this top chain right here. And so right now for row, row, round, round, row, uh, for round one, we're just going to do double crochets into every stitch, every chain stitch, all the way around. And again, I do like to go into both loops because I find that it does create a neater edge, although really it's totally up to you. And so I'm going to do the rest of this round off camera because there's really nothing to this other than just doing double crochets all the way around. And then I'm gonna show you the join and then we will continue on with round two. All right, so I crocheted all 72 and I did, of course, double count my stitches as always. And so you wanna be sure that your 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 ring again is not twisted as you can see mine is not twisted but when you're doing the join it does seem a little bit weird and wonky until you actually do the join which i'm going to show you right now now again we're not going to go into this chaining up of two but we're going to go into that first double crochet that we did with a slip stitch to finish round one. And so as you can see, we have not created a Mobius strip, which is not what we're going for. I have done the Mobius sort of shawl kind of wrap thing before, but no, that's not what we're going for in this particular case. Also, um, you know, if you put it on your head at this point, I'm gonna put it on my head right now, it's a little bit loose at the moment. Not to worry because we are now going to work on some ribbing for the brim, which will tighten it up a little bit and give it some elasticity. So onwards to round two. All right, so for row rounds, why do I keep doing that? Rounds two, three, and four, we are going to work on front and back post double crocheting for the ribbing for the hat. And it is going to work very similarly with all three of those rounds. So again, going to chain up two to give us some height. And then see this right here is our chain two from the previous round. We're gonna go around this first double crochet with a front post double crochet. So going around the post and going to do a front post, raises it, and then the next, sti next stitch is going to be a back post. So going around the back, around the post, and then finish up your double crochet. This can be a little bit fiddly at first, but you get the hang of it. So that goes backwards and then front post, and then back post. And then front post. Personally, I like a one by one ribbing. You could experiment and do, you know, a two by two or a one by two or whatever. However, your count may not be exact as far as it lining up, but chances are like with most of your hats, there is a distinct front and back where you have some sort of seam in the back. However, if you do a one by one, there will be really no seam that you will be able to notice, which is rather nice. So I'm gonna finish up the rest of this round off camera, and I'm gonna show you the join and then the next two rounds are going to be essentially the same. Of course, also this depends on how wide you want your brim to be. Personally, I found that three rounds of ribbing worked out just fine for me. So I'll meet back up with you when I'm done with this round. Alrighty, so I'm almost done with round two 
and I did my front post. I just need to do one more back post. Again, we are going to be ignoring that chain two. So I just need to do my back post and then we can join round two to itself with a slip stitch. So again, what we're gonna do is we're going to ignore this chaining up of two and going to be going into the top of this front post double crochet right there with a slip stitch. And there you have round two. Now for rounds three, gotta, gr gotta grab the clicker, three and four, what I'm gonna be doing is continuing on by chaining up two and then around the front posts, do a front post and around the back posts, you guessed it, do back posts. And that is going to create my brim. So that's all you need to do for this round and the next round after that, or the round after that, if you want a wide brim, totally up to you. And seeing as how this is more of a slouchy beret and it doesn't have a fitted crown like some do, you can make a wider brim and it will really not affect the final outcome. Personal preference. All right, so that being said, yep, there we go. I'm going to do the rest of this round and next round off camera and I will meet back up with you. Alrighty. Round five. All right, now we're getting to the good stuff. Okay. Well, now that we have the brim finished, now we're going to start with the actual motifs. And right now it's a matter of making the foundation of those motifs. So I did my slip stitch right there, and we're going to start by chaining up three. And into the same stitch, do another double crochet, chain two, and into the same stitch, two more double crochets. So we're creating the sort of the, the framework in between the motifs with this little double shell going on here. So from here, chain three, and then skipping five stitches. So we went into this one right here. So one, two, three, four, five. So into this stitch here, this front post double crochet, do a double crochet, chain three, and into the same stitch, another double crochet. And this is going to be the foundation for one of our motifs. So continuing right along, foot loose and fancy free, chain three, skip another five stitches, one, two, three, four, five, into that sixth stitch, two double crochets, chain two, and two more double crochets into that same stitch. Chain three, skip five stitches, one, two, three, four, five, into the sixth stitch, double crochet, chain three, and double crochet into the same stitch. Chain three. Skipping five stitches, one, two, three, four, five, into the sixth stitch. Two double crochets, chain two, two double crochets.
And so that is essentially what we're going to be doing all the way around. And it's going to end right around over here with a double crochet, chain three, double crochet. Then you would chain three and slip stitch. I'm going to do that actually. I'm just going to do the rest of this round off camera, but I'll show you the last cluster and how to do the join. But I mean, that's really what it amounts to. And the only difference between what I'm doing here and if we were doing a five motifed um, version with the 60 chains is you would have one of these and one of these fewer. So um, instead of uh, six of these, you would only have five. So, I mean, that's really the only difference between this version and the orange version that I showed previously. It's the only difference. Okay. Okay. So that being said, I'll meet back up with you when I reach the end of the round. Okay. We're almost done with round five. I just need to chain three and skip the next five stitches. One, two, three, four, five into that sixth stitch. Do a double crochet. And I just did my two, my two and two separated by a chain two space. So it's double crochet, chain three, and into the same stitch, double crochet, chain three, and then last but not least, into this first double crochet, and we're going to be doing this join for the rest of this project, really, um, into the top third chain, going to do a slip stitch, like so, just get in there, both loops, pull it through. And there you are. Now to really finish it, finish it, I'm going to do a slip stitch into the next double crochet and a slip stitch into the chain two space. So that, my dears, is the end of round five. Now you may be thinking, oh, this this is this is kind of looking kind of wonky here. Well, this edge. Uh, after you do your your brim, this edge is going to taper outwards. That's the idea. And actually, let me show you. Because when you lay this flat, yeah, it, it will taper outwards. That's the idea. So it's not one that goes completely vertically. All right. That's, this is not that kind of hat. It does go out because it's a beret. So just something to keep in mind. So onwards to round six. Okay, round six, actually rounds six, seven, and eight are all very similar to each other. And we're going to be getting to that, you know, over time. Um, so the beginning of every round is pretty much the same from here on in. Going to chain up three, do another double crochet, chain two, and into that same space, two more double crochets because we're creating our framework, our spines, um, our spokes of the hat, if you will. And that's always going to be the same. So from here, chain three. And into this chain three space, we need to create the foundation for our pineapple. So into the chain three space, seven double crochets, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, chain three, and then into the chain two space of the next little grouping here two, well, two double crochets, chain two, two double crochets, and then chain three, and then we make another seven double crochets into this chain three space. 
And that is really all you need to do for the rest of this round. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And then, of course, you would chain three. And then into the next cluster space, two double crochets, chain two, two double crochets. And one thing that I really wanted to do for the design of this pattern is make it as easy as possible. Um, so the, the chains in between your center spokes, spines, whatever, and in between those and your pineapples, the number of chains always remains the same. So you don't have to remember, oh, it goes from three to four to five. No, no, it's just, it's all three chains. So I wanted to simplify things, you know, and I hope I was successful. So for the rest of this round, um, do seven double crochets into the chain three spaces, into the chain two spaces, two double crochets, chain two, two double crochets, seven double crochets, and of course, chain three spaces in between, and just work your way all the way around until you reach the beginning where you would do into this space here, seven double crochets, then you would chain three, and then do your slip stitch join. So you would slip stitch to the top of this first double crochet here, slip stitch into the next double crochet, and then slip stitch into the chain two space. And I will meet back up with you for round seven. Okay, round seven. And like I was saying before, round seven and eight are very similar to round six. Um, just a slight variation. So start by chaining up three. Double crochet into that chain two space. Chain two. Two more double crochets into the same space. Okay, to hop over here, chain three. And then what we're going to do, we need to have our, our fans fan out a little bit more. So on the first and the last double crochet, we're gonna double them, make them fan out just a little bit more. So into this first double crochet, going to do two double crochets one and another one into that same stitch. So we're going to go from seven stitches to a total of nine stitches. So I've got two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then into this last stitch, two stitches to make eight and nine. Very good. Okay, so now hopping right along, chain three, and then into this spine, do two double crochets, chain two, and two more double crochets, and then chain three, and then do the exact same thing, two double crochets into the first double crochet, and then, oh, there we go, and then one in each, and then two in the last one. So we're going from seven stitches to nine stitches, just like we did right here. And we're gonna do this all the way around. And then when you reach the end here, we're gonna go from seven to nine. So again, two in the first, one in each, two in the last, then you would chain three, slip stitch, slip stitch, slip stitch, and you will be ready for round eight. 
All right, round eight. Okay. So round eight is going to be very much like round seven in that it is going to be an increase round. And this is actually gonna be the last of the increase rounds for the hat. So I'm gonna start by chaining up three and then do another double crochet into the chain two space, chain two, and two more doubles into that same chain two space for our spine or spindle or spoke or whatever you wanna call it. So much terminology, so little time. All right, so from here, chain three, and going into our base of our pineapple, again, the first and last stitch are going to be doubled. So going into that first double crochet with a double crochet and do another one into the same stitch, and then do a double crochet into each stitch across until you reach the last stitch where we're going to do two stitches into that stitch. And then the rest of this round is really self-explanatory, I think, because we're just increasing the fans and the spokes are remaining neutral. They're not increasing, they're not decreasing, they're just being happy little spokes. So we've reached the last stitch, so two double crochets into that stitch. So we started with seven, then we increased to nine, so now we should have 11. Two, four, six, eight, 10, and 11. Perfect! Okay, so then from here, grab some more yarn. So from here, we would chain three and into the spoke, two double crochets. chain two, two more double crochets, and then chain three, and then into, get out of there, into this next stitch, two double crochets into that first stitch, and then one in each, until you reach the last stitch where you would do two double crochets. So basically it's just fanning out, nothing major. Still love it though. Absolutely love how this is coming out so far. So then when you've reached the end of your round, you would do two in the first, one in each, two in the last, chain three, slip stitch, slip stitch, and slip stitch. And that's really all there is to it for round eight and the increasing of your piece. And so if you lay out your project, as I'm doing right here, you can see that it does sort of flare outwards. I'm gonna give you an aerial view. It does flare outwards. Now, what you could conceivably do, although this will change the dimensions of your hat, what you could conceivably do is if you wanted to flare out even more so, what you could do is add an additional round where instead of 11, you could have even more. That's up to you. Um, but again, I highly encourage you to think outside of the box and play around with the pattern for a fit that works for you. A fit that fits you. Yeah, that works. Um, so I'm gonna do the rest of this round off camera. And uh, from there, we're gonna start on the decreasing of the hat. All right, so I'm gonna finish the rest and I will be right back. 
All right, my dear. So that concludes part one of the tutorial, because you know I like to be thorough and not rush ahead too much. So that concludes part one. And yes, at the moment, it does look kind of wonky. I know, but that's because we were doing a whole bunch of increasing. And from here, we're going to be doing decreasing, which is going to bring it back to itself for the crown of the hat in part two of this video tutorial. So that being said, I hope you're enjoying this so far. I know I am. And if you are, please give a little thumbs up button down below. I appreciate your appreciation. And yeah, also one other thing. Um, I, I do get a lot of requests for patterns and so on and so forth. Um, at the moment, this is not a written pattern. It's just a tutorial. However, if you guys are interested, I, I want some input. Um, if you're interested in me actually writing this out and putting it up for sale on my Etsy store, let me know in the comments section down below. Um, probably going to be, uh, you know, a couple of dollars, um, you know, if I were to put it up for sale. I know that some of you do like the option of having a, a pattern uh, as well, you know, if you don't want to be online all the time. So just putting it out there, let me know what you guys think. So that being said, until next time, I want all of you to stay inspired, stay caffeinated, stay stitching, and stay safe. I love you guys, and I'll see you in the next episode of this tutorial. Take care of yourselves and each other. Bye for now.